There's a problem, no, there are many problems with the modern version of self-improvement. It's not the goal or the intent that's the issue. The desire to work on your attributes, improve your circumstances and ultimately live a happier and more fulfilled life is really the logical, almost instinctual next step when you reach a certain and not particularly high threshold of self-awareness. Whether you ignore it or indulge it, that desire is pretty much in all of us somewhere to some extent. To say that's normal would be an understatement, that's just human. It's how we go about it that I can't help but question. I look at some of the culture, the mentality and the methods of what we recognise as self-improvement these days and I think, is this legit? Does this shit actually work or is much of it in fact, and I should think of a more articulate way to say this, but a massive, useless, self-absorbed, often self-defeating sack of utter fucking nonsense that serves nobody except the people selling books and courses. Now, I'm not going to sit here and subject you to predictable criticisms of morning routine videos or hustle culture. Whilst I'm sure that would instigate many likes, I'm going to talk to you as if you share my intolerance of predictability and obvious conversations. I feel as much physical pain from a cringe as the next person, but if we're really honest about it, you know, if something makes you cringe, that's your problem, and if something makes me cringe, that's my problem. So the theme of this video isn't going to be point at cringe stuff and cringe together. Instead, I am going to tell you why I think a lot of self-improvement needs a lot of improvement. The emphasis on personal gain probably won't make you happier. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Obviously, the logic doesn't logic on many levels. Is Elon Musk the average in his circle? If it's a closed circle, do they all become average? I don't even know what average is referring to, but it's fine. Quotes aren't always meant to be taken literally. Sometimes they're just supposed to get across a message. So let's put the logical inconsistencies aside and just look at the message. And there are charitable interpretations that seem reasonable. Don't hang out with bad vibes people who sap your energy. Try to learn from people with more knowledge and experience than you. But I think most interpret this as spend more time with successful people so that you can be more successful. First, you better hope that everyone isn't trying to do that because why would these successful people hang out with you if you're just bringing their average down? Second, success, happiness. These things don't usually happen by osmosis as far as I understand. So thinking that you're going to absorb somebody's knowledge or attributes just by being in their vicinity is really just another way of shifting responsibility away from yourself. This is similar to common platitudes that focus on changing your environment, which most people seem to interpret as move to Dubai so that you can hang around rich people, even if you have to do it on a credit card and just hope that you get rich before you drown in interest payments. But most of all, my real issue is that this views relationships through the lens of what you can gain from them. And that's a pretty weird and warped way to decide who you spend most time with. This isn't just going to a work conference or a seminar to expand your knowledge. This is people you spend most time with. To me, that means friends. And that is the 101 of how to create a society of social climbers, always thinking about how they might benefit from every situation in an effort to clamber ever higher up the ladder of social significance that really only exists inside the heads of social climbers. But I'm just using this quote as an example to make a point. It's not about this quote and it's not limited to relationships. Much of self-improvement focuses on what you can get out of every single thing you do. Reading is less about enjoyment and more about what you can get from the book or who it might help you become. Podcasts and media can't just be entertainment, they have to be educational. The simplest, most basic things like going for a walk have become about the benefits of going for a walk. The walk is the benefit. That's, it's the thing. Of course, we do many things for some kind of personal gain. That is an entirely necessary part of life. But you can't view all of life and everything and every person in it that way. Self-improvement books like to talk about habits. So let me ask, 
What kind of habit do you create if you're constantly looking at everything through the lens of what you can get from it? That thought process will become habit and that is the antithesis of being present. It's the opposite of being content. It's a self-inflicted state of perpetual wanting. I'm not for a second saying don't do anything productive or that productivity itself is in any way bad. I'm just saying that some things should be left for the sake of the thing itself because they're just too sacred to be done for a reason. All right, that's longer than I expected, so I'm gonna do the rest quick fire style. Two, it's an industry that pretends it's not. Some people just want to help others. Some people want to help others and make money. Some people just want to make money. None of these groups are necessarily bad, but when one group poses as another, it can lead to a spectrum of outcomes that range from the fairly harmless right the way up to the predatory exploitation of desperation. If you pay to go on somebody's course or to be in somebody's exclusive community or to attend an event or even just buy somebody's book, you should do so with more diligence than you make your other purchases because this industry isn't regulated. These people often don't have refund policies. There is no obligation to create a product that represents value for money and no recompense if they don't. So just try to avoid personality cults and at least check Reddit for some reviews first. Three, it's indirect. For something that emphasizes productivity so much, there's an insane amount of ceremonial bullshit. I'm not sure when making your bed became a self-improvement habit. To me, that was instilled from an early age as a don't get volleyed by your mum habit. That doesn't make you a disciplined ninja, it just makes you an adult. But seriously, do you really wanna open your journal every day and write about your short-term goals and your long-term goals and what you're grateful for and your motivations and affirmations? Do you really wanna overhaul your life to change your environment? Do you really want to meditate? Do you really wanna work through that reading list? Do you really wanna to go to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? The answer might be yes. If it's yes, it's cool. It might be no, but you believe it will help you be a better person in some way, which is also cool, right? You don't have to want to do something to make it worth doing. But at least sometimes there's another option, which is stop doing things that you secretly hope might encourage you to finally do the actual things you need to do and just do that thing that you're dancing around. Because the truth is, most people already know what they need to do to improve themselves or their lives. And self-improvement is just the dance they do whilst they're psyching themselves up to do it. For the glorification of solitude. For some reason, there seems to be some weird obsession with having a small circle. Having trust issues isn't self-improvement. Stop trying to be some cool enigma that nobody gets to hang around with. You're not aloof if you're telling everyone about it. Now, I realize this video is just the problem actually a very small sample of the problems without offering a solution. So I'll probably make a part two if people seem to care about what is really only the opinion of another unqualified YouTuber. But I don't want this to come across as trashing self-improvement on the whole. There is a version of self-improvement that undeniably transforms people's lives for the better. There are good resources and good books and people who make good content or sell good products and just because somebody makes money or even gets filthy rich off self-improvement doesn't automatically make them a fraudster guru, right? Above all though, the attitude of striving towards improvement or towards goals or towards a better future for yourself and maybe your family is not just noble, but also it's just something to do, isn't it? It creates a sense of direction for a generation who often feel quite directionless. And maybe none of my criticisms apply to your definition of self-improvement. I hope that's true. But just proceed with caution and a healthy dose of skepticism because there are many pitfalls to avoid and traps to evade, you know. Try to remember that if a quote sounds cool, that doesn't make it true or useful. Try to remember that if you're spending money on it, somebody's making money from it. Try to remember that it's better to learn a little bit from a lot of people than a lot from just one. 
please add your own rational nuggets of advice in the comments. See you later. Jordy Lenny is my hero!